I'm Alex with Storyline Travel. Storyline Travel, we're family travel specialists, helping you make memorable experiences through travel. In this video, we're going to talk about dining on the Ruby Princess. We'll start this video, as most cruise fans know, at the buffet. On the Ruby Princess, the Horizons Court is where you find your um, Lido Deck Buffet. And as we're boarding the ship for the first day, we're directed to this um, wonderful buffet meal. You'll find drink stations of water, tea on tap, lemonade, and then you'll also find coffee, tea bags for more warm beverages, and then all the things that go with it, sugar, sweeteners, and milk. Now, let's move on to some goodies around the Lido deck. First, there's Slice. Slice is a great place to get a slice of pizza. This place um, serves both margarita or cheese pizza and pepperoni pizza every day. And then they have a third option that is a rotational pizza that is a specialty of the day. If you notice the pizzas, they're large and they serve them in slices. On the Lido deck right next to it is a place where you can get an ice cream cone or a specialty coffee. Now, let's take a look at the main dining room. There's four main dining rooms. We'll start with Michelangelo's. Each of the dining rooms does have a similar menu. We enjoyed this crab and artichoke dip for our appetizer, a nice grilled seafood bowl, and then of course, the Princess Love Bow Dream was a great dessert. Another main dining room is Da Vinci's. If you'll notice a theme, the Ruby Princess named all of their main dining rooms after famous artists. And you can see the wonderful decorations. On theme nights, for example, pub night, you would have a menu that was themed specific to that night. So fish and chips or bangers and mash, these British um, specialties. And then the fun jam roly-poly for dessert. And as you can see from the menu and the wonderful foods that we had, Princess did a great job of bringing the cultures of the world to our dining room table. And the last of the three main dining rooms available on the Ruby Princess was the Botticelli dining room. This was actually the first main dining room that we enjoyed. And as you can see, we had traditional, wonderful food, that same excellent um, decor, and it really brought out the, the idea of you're eating in an art gallery while you're dining. One of our personal favorites is tea time. Typically served in an afternoon of a sea day, tea time is set aside in one of the main dining rooms. You can find it on your um, princess patter and it's served for an hour. You're served a nice hot tea and then both savory and sweet items, finger foods if you will, while you're enjoying tea. And of course, one of the specialties of tea time is scone with a uh, berry compote and cream, which we enjoyed um, very much during our time. This was a fun way to break up the afternoon on a sea day, highly recommended. Next, we'll head down to deck five and the International Cafe. This was one of our favorite hangouts. During the day, they might have sweets and pastries. Um, in the afternoons, the menu would change and you would see sandwiches or uh, maybe small savory pies that you could eat. And it was also attached to the coffee shop where we would each morning go and get our, our morning coffee. Finally, on the other side of the coffee bar was a um, alcohol bar, maybe what you might call a normal bar. And they would do demonstrations and mixology type activities uh, during the cruise at this bar. 
So this became a personal favorite. We really enjoyed hanging out at the International Cafe. Now let's take a look at specialty dining. The Crown Grill is a London themed steakhouse. It is a very elegant dining room that serves some amazing food. We were privileged to be sitting in a location where we could see the open kitchen and watch them cook and serve our lobster cakes, which were amazing. They served a salt selection, three different types of salt that you could use on your food, each with a different flavor. The lamb chops were absolutely amazing. So more than just steak and the mousse, fantastic. Our daughter enjoyed the um, lobster tail and our server um, helped her out by um, taking the shell off of the lobster and serving it up for her and poking a little fun at her at the same time. Next, let's head over to Sabatini's. Sabatini's is the Italian grill. When you walk into the main area, there's actually a nice lounge and bar area, Adagio, across the entrance from Sabatini's. And as you enter into Sabatini, you will see the hostess station and then step into the dining area. We were very happy to know that they had a large table as we had a group that we were leading and they had a place for all of us. We sat down to enjoy this fine Italian meal, share stories of how our cruise was going, and talk about the different things we wanted to do before the cruise was over. These are some of the wonderful foods that we had, all Italian themed, um, more of a tapas style. And um, the seafood parcel was something I decided to try. It came in an interesting um, paper serving on top of our plate and my server opened it up and inside were mussels, clams, and a seafood stew that was cooked in the paper and the parchment that it was served. Very unique. We finished off the meal with an amazing dessert like this vanilla panna cotta and a specialty coffee to make dessert complete. The final specialty restaurant is called The Salty Dog. It is a gourmet take on hot dogs and burgers. And it was a fun place to go to listen to live music and enjoy a more gourmet version of pub foods. So that was our adventure on this Princess Cruise. Leave a comment below, tell us what you thought. In Storyline Travel, we believe every adventure is a story waiting to be told. Mm -hmm.